subscribe to the Danny Houston Podcast, man. What's the uh? So tell me the origin of, of rap niggas from the from from your inception. You know what I'm saying when y'all first start putting that because it's a it's video. It ended up being the lead single, bro. Uh, man, Jeezy was on the record. Boosie was on the record. Master P was on the record, but the business was all fucked up. The business was all fucked up. So this going from 2015 when Atlantic first reached out to me about the record. Like so victory they, they, was supposed to come out they reached, in 2015. They, they, reached out, they, they reached out to you and on on, on on producing and paying me for my record. So how did they know to get to you? Because because, because it's my record. Hmm. How else they gonna come at me? They contacted me about the Nipsey Hussle. You know he was signed to Atlanta. A lot of the time people thought Nip was independent. He was signed. You know you're not saying shit. The labels ain't gonna say shit. You can say you independent all day long. They know they got paperwork on. They don't give a damn. So, I mean, but even then, because it's a video of him saying, like, I'm working on this rap nigga records with my nigga Beto, you know what I'm saying? Where were y'all at at that time? Like, how did we? We good, when, when, bro. No, no, would not about, come to the South. No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying, because people go see this and say, well, I know such and such producer. Talk about the, the creation of the record. Bro, the creation of the record, bro, at the time, Nip had a studio uh, <clears throat> downtown LA on Olive Street. You know what I'm saying? The real ones. That fuck with Nip don't know what time they gonna know what it is. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Rick, Shout it? out to Hoggy. No, that's not that. That's a that's a later story. Oh, okay. That's years later. I gotta talk about this shit too. But uh, yeah, we did. We started that record then, 2013 on Olive Street downtown L.A. Uh, and uh, shit, he did it. He like, man, I want to get Boosie on. The Boosie was fresh home then. Boosie jumped on the bitch. Cause at the time he was still signed Atlantic, and that's where Nip was at. So it was easy to do that. And they know he, Nip had this fat ass motherfucking budget. I mean, he did the shit. Uh, Jeezy got on the motherfucker too. Oh, this happened earlier. This 2013. This, this whole rec, that rep, this record started in 2013, bro. Would have came out in 2015. The victory lap would have came out then, but. Nip was so focused on doing so much other shit. Honestly, he wasn't really, not saying he wasn't worried about the music, but he was on to other shit. You know, I'm going to get to that shit when I get to it. The label, he like, shit, I done already got paid for the album. I'm, I'm, you know, shit, I'm doing my shit. I'm going to keep my name high in the streets. But in the meantime, I'm going to do all this other shit. To my recognition, uh, Atlantic was like, shit, we finna put this motherfucker out. And, when they reached out to me, they handled the business shit. It wasn't right. You know what I'm saying? For one, I don't want no niggas touching my shit. I'm not signing no work for hires. Got to get my pub. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That ain't happening. So if we going to do it like that, it got to go down like I spent, how it went down. You know? So how, because let's, let's just do a business lesson on this because when the record came out, it was it was presented as produced by, I forgot the, the, the guy. You ain't got to say that name. We ain't giving them no free promo. But just to... The, 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 you know, how do we go just on, you know, for somebody who's in the game and want to get in the game and understand and, you know, ownership and taking care of your shit, you know what I'm saying? Talking man, about look, bro, I'm going to say this, man. Nip was a student of a lot of Houston, Texas artists, you know what I'm saying? That's how I even got to him. That's how I got to Lee. He was a real big fan of Boss Lee, Hall. And Lee okay? had that record. Uh, I'm Blue Laces one, mm -hmm. but we gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you how that came up. Well, I'm I can't tell you how that came about. That's Lee shit, but that's how he got uh, introduced to our shit, bro. He listened to a lot of uh, Chris Ward and shit. Me and Chris Ward had sessions with Nip in L.A. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I'm mean, if I ain't mistaken, shit, he the one that put that go long together. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? They, that shit really went through Ward, but at the time Lee was fucking with Ron, some solo shit or whatever. Uh, but around the time I'm working with Nip in L.A., Rose was in L.A. working too, fucking with Lee, and that shit came about like that, you know. And, and speaking of rap niggas, it was crazy that the song ended up calling rap niggas, cause you know you might want to highlight Ward, I might let him tell, you know, I let him tell his shit, but he had a record. Not saying it was the same, but it was, you know, it was influenced by. You know what I'm saying? He was supposed to get on a song, and for whatever reason, it didn't happen. But we were like, God damn. Like, you know what I'm saying? But he was, you know, he rapped over goddamn Kiki, I'm a G. Like, he was a real big fan of our sound at that time. And him knowing that my relationship was season. Like, Nip was very smart about 
he knew who to fuck with as far as trusting his sound, you know. That's why he fucked with Houston. Houston was probably one of his biggest fan bases outside of L.A., you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Hmm. So, okay. Just talking about just how does it go from, like, how do you get that shit straight? You know what I'm saying? Long little pimp. He told me about. He told me about a lot of, and, and he trusted me with the business to give me the game to know how to reverse the plays. Cause he done been through them shit. Hey man, I'm, hey man, don't ever sign shit with nothing, man. If it ain't finna contract wise, if it ain't finna change your life, don't sign shit. Like, cause at the time, pimp had done ran through the UGK budget. For this record, he like, man, don't worry about it. I got y'all. Woo, woo. I'm like, man, whatever I got to sign to make sure I'm on this pro- project. I don't give a damn about no pub on this song. The young man, he corrected me off the rip. Hell no, nah, you care about your pub. I'm not finna have you do no whole ass shit that they been done to me. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, nah, hell no. Nah. We gonna make sure that this shit right. And he taught me publishing and all of that shit to where, you know, somebody do a record with you and you go try to recreate that record. Shit, do you still own that? Hmm. Cause you're a part of the original. Hmm. It wouldn't be no song if, without the original. You can't go redo no shit that we done done, and say this nigga produced it. Is the game in there? If you say well, shit, if I don't sign, it's always up for dispute. Facts. I'm not gonna sign shit. I'm gonna make sure I got the sessions. I'm gonna make sure all this shit's time stamped through Pro Tools. You know what I'm saying? You can argue with that shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You got, hey man, lawyer. Straight the fuck up. I got several lawyers. Hmm. I'm, I just look like I, ain't, I don't give a damn. I'm going to let them lawyers go talk to them motherfuckers. I ain't finna do shit but work. Lawyers going to do that. They going to handle their business. And I'm cool getting my 80%. Yeah. And, 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 the, and the record drop, was that 16? Say that again. When the record came out. What was nah, it, it came out in 18. 18. 18. Victory so, Life came out in 18. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but you know what was crazy though, man, because... The only reason, it's crazy, because I saw this, because I'm already preparing myself for the worst with this record, because I'm seeing how it's going. Communication wasn't really there. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, Lee, y- y'all's relationship towards the end, it, I mean. Nah, I mean, bro, it was like to the point to where, for several reasons, I just didn't want to be around L.A. like that. You know, not only that. See them when I then they ain't come home from LA. I got a whole bunch of partners there. Then. You know, I just don't fuck with LA like that. And I said I don't fuck with LA as a city, but a lot of people I'm, I'm close to and I love and went down there and they ain't come home for whatever reasons. You know what I'm saying? So towards the end of the shit with Nip, I wouldn't be communicating through Lee. You know what I'm saying? But bro, we sending shit and we gonna just work how we gonna work. I don't. For sitting in L.A. how we used to, bro. I didn't have a kid then. So when Pimp first passed, I moved to L.A. I'm in L.A. from 2008 to fucking 2014. You know, so. Hmm. But, okay, so the record dropped 18. How long did it take you to get, like, everything straight? Because been, we've been talking about this for bro, a minute. Bro, it didn't get straight to, like, 2020. It didn't get straight to 2020. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So, uh, you know, it's bittersweet than a bitch because me and Nip had a real relationship. We, like the song, in order for a nigga to do a song with you in 2013 and let that be his lead single on his first album, that's how much he loved the record. But that's how much, I, I knew how much he loved the record, so I didn't, I, I wasn't finna take no list for the shit. And I had needed all my credits. I needed all my motherfucking other. Uh, I need them, them splits to be right. You know what I'm saying? So it ended up making sense in the end. But, uh, yeah, that shit bittersweet than a bitch, man. I ain't never had to sue nobody behind no motherfucking music. I only like I rather fuck with niggas. I I rather only do music with niggas I fuck with. It ain't about the money, bro. We can't sit around and just chill, chop it up, and do what we. You know what I'm saying? I don't care to be fucking with none. I didn't work with everybody I didn't want to work with. On my bucket, on my bucket list, outside of goddamn Tupac and EZ, which couldn't happen because in '95 and shit, I'm in the fifth, fourth, fifth grade. But goddamn, I got the you know pimp. I'm blessed. I come in the game with Pimp C when shit. The first goddamn UGK tape I had, I had to hide that shit in the crayon mm. box, nigga. I got fucking 
the southern way out of Howard's on Ninth Avenue, goddamn. Shit, that's some PA shit. Nigga, they used to sell tapes in that bitch. I'm like, these, who the fuck is these niggas on the sea wild, nigga? Man, these niggas from Port Arthur on the tape, and this bitch jamming and this stuff. What the fuck is this shit? It fucked me up, bro. I saw about it, bro. I knew. Man, I knew then, like, I, it's crazy how it ended up coming about, but I knew then, I, I got the, these niggas from PA doing this shit, I've been playing music interest my whole life. I stayed in the band until I figured out I'm not finna be in no marching band, none of this shit, all this shit. I stayed in it long enough to where I'm starting to fuck with music. I did that marching band shit too. I did too, like, oh, come on now, you gotta stay in it around mm -hmm. it, you know, I played the goddamn saxophone. From the saxophone to the goddamn drums to cymbals, all this shit in the march, man. I played this shit. Uh, I've been playing in church all my life. You know what I'm saying? The drums in church all my life. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you when you in a once I realized what I was gonna do. Now this this some real G shit. PA. You know what I'm saying? And it's it's cool to be with this nigga right here, man. Cause when we was young, this nigga was wild as fuck. <laughs> Wild in the beach, man. He called me the bitch now, but back when we was young, this nigga was wild, bro. So, at the time, his daddy had a spot a block away from my mama house. So, I fuck with Tom. I'm outside, you know what I'm saying? But, nigga, I'm in the house with a Dr. Rhythm beat machine, nigga. I'm making screw tapes off of two karaoke machines and shit. Like, nigga. You know, I put the DJ before Beto because respect for OG Beto, goddamn John Beto, mates. Mm. What's happening? And, and on a real situation, this might be 2004, 2005, we in the VIP of Onyx, nigga. It's 3, 4 in the morning. This when Houston was Houston. You know what I'm saying? Beto in the back. And my OG ended up like, man, this young Beto PA me. Like, I be hearing about him, but, you know, and I told him then, I'm going to put the DJ in front of my shit. Just because, even though at the time, you know, if people don't just go through credits, they don't know. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But just out of respect. You know what I'm saying? Let me put that in front of that so they won't know. So they won't, they can separate the two. Young Beto from John Beto. Ooh, ooh, you know? But, hell yeah, I fuck with all of them. All of the face, goddamn. Shout out Warren Lee. You know, that's my OGs, man. I'm. I'm a student of the game before I'm in it, bro, and I study this shit before all of this, so I know how to ex I know how to execute. You know what I'm saying? So when the, so when the, on the ownership side of things with rap niggas and all that, how did you come out percentage wise? You know what I'm saying? Really once well. Every, once everything was done. Really well. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> You know what I'm saying? And that's all not, because not, of not dollar amount, but I mean like. No, I'm talking about yeah, percentage. Well, percentage I don't want to say yeah. it, you know, because, you know, the business done, yeah. but it's still, you yeah. know, it's a lot of. It's, it, when you. Uh, when the artist pays, bro, and they shit splits and all that, that shit is. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's bittersweet, bro. You know what I'm saying? You gotta, like I said, bro, you got some business you gotta get done. Don't put this shit off. You know what I'm saying? Because you don't know what tomorrow going to hold. You know what I'm saying? You got to... You got to take care of that shit today. Fuck that shit, man. I, it, even back then, bro, Pimp used to have it to... Uh, well, he he was saying it, but he made me implement it in my shit, bro. When we do these songs, we're going to do the split sheets off the rip. Let's go ahead and do that shit off the rip. That way it ain't gonna be no shit later, you know what I'm saying? And we had agreed to do what we gonna do and shit. We sent all that shit off to the label to admin and let them do that shit. Let the lawyers do that shit. That way you can still be friends with a motherfucker and let the lawyers fight. Cause really that's how it was with me and Nip for a, a few years. Like I ain't even talking to Nip about no business. I ain't got to. You know, I'm gonna let my lawyers talk to his and that's how we gonna rock it, you know, but uh as I watched The Breakfast Club, I had saw some shit. This is why he's doing these interviews. That's how I was able to counteract to make sure that I'm right. And I stand tall where I'll be able to stand in on my shit. I saw a clip where it said, you know, Diddy said he don't need to come out to, you know, rap niggas was, it sounded more Southern. So the way that you heard it was more West Coast shit influenced. You know, he was like, man, you want to come out like natural born killers. That's mm -hmm, what he said. Mm -hmm. And so D shout out to Diddy because Diddy helped me turn up on these people. You know what I'm saying? For forever, five ever. Mm. But uh, on that interview, he said, uh, 
he want to come out sounding like Ice Cube, Natural Born Killers, and it was really just because it sounded so West Coast with they goddamn Dr. Dre Simpson shit. He wasn't, he was just saying you want to come out like a West Coast artist, but Diddy didn't realize how much love Nip really got down here like that at the time. If he would have dropped that first rap, niggas would have did way more than the shit y'all heard. Mm. For shit show. Like, I got the emails. I'll show you when you're like, man, send me the shit, man. Jesus jumping on all this shit. 2013, bro. So when it came to this new rendition of it, you know what I'm saying? That's what the world got to hear. You know what I'm saying? But thank God for Pimp C giving me the game that he gave me in a short time that I was able to just lock all the way in with him. That I was able to uh, stand victorious. Donnie Houston. Donnie Houston. Donnie Houston. Donnie Houston.